Alright, so in the last video, um, we looked at doing uh, this here. Now, uh, this is all well and good, but what if what if we wanted to do two other things? What if we wanted to do three other things? So we wanted to fade that out, we wanted to fade the music out, we wanted to make it bigger, we wanted to do zoom in, we wanted to do something. We wanted to do other things with it. So this is... Um, I'm saying it's no good, but it's we need something else, okay? So w what I'm going to propose is that we create a coroutine factory, and the coroutine factory will perform an action um, because this here, uh, this time, well, time is less than one, uh, evaluate, and then the yield return, and then this here with the duration. This is all familiar okay so this is used quite a lot in different places so we're going to create a generic coroutine that we can use anywhere we want and we just pass in actions that we want to be performed so i'm going to create a new class up here called coroutine factory and of course it's a static class and I'm going to have public i enumerator create. And this is going to take in um, an animation curve. Actually, it's not going to take in an animation curve. It's going to take in an action. And it's going to take in an action that takes in a floating point number. And this is going to be the action to be performed. And I'm going to add my using system. And then I'm going to pretty much copy what I have uh, here. Okay. So I have float time equals zero f, um, while time is less than one. Uh, and then I want to do the action. So I want to say time equals. Um, uh, time, delta time divided by duration. So where's duration coming from? Well, maybe we should put in duration in here. So we put in duration in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do some kind of action based upon that time. What action? Well, it turns out that we've actually passed in the action here. So we can do action and then we pass in time. So we pass in our, our time object and then we do yield return null. And at the very end, we want to make sure that everything's set correctly. So we just do action one. Okay. So this is very, very similar to uh, what we've done before. Why is that saying that there? Oh, static. Um, so this is very, very similar to this one here. It's just that instead of canvas group alpha, it's some kind of action that we're going to perform. Okay. So what is that action that we're going to perform? Well, the action that we're going to perform is we are going to add to that alpha. So instead of this, we can now get rid of fade because fade is it's garbage. We don't need it anymore. Okay. Um, so we have our curve and we have our coroutine here, but this time the coroutine itself is actually going to be a coroutine factory. And then we're going to specify the duration, uh, sorry, uh, coroutine factory dot create, and then it's going to be duration. And then the action we want to perform, which I'm going to call fade out. Okay. Now, we don't actually need to do fade out because remember we can actually have anonymous methods, but I'm going to just going to create one here just now, just for sort of completeness and to make it a little bit easier to see what's going on. So I'm going to create a, a floating point action here. So I need to add my using system at the very top here. So my action is going to be called fade out and my action is going to be, um, 
uh, actually I need a couple of things here so it's going to pass in the time and then the time is going to say um, canvas group dot alpha equals curve dot evaluate t okay now I don't have curve just now but I can get it so I can do var curve equals animation curve actually it's just curve factory isn't it create and then my starting point which is uh, 1f my ending point which is 0f and that's it oh I've got carve dear oh dear oh dear <clears throat> so I create my curve uh, I then use that in the action and I say that this action here is my fade out and it takes in time t and then time t evaluates the curve at that particular point in time and then it updates the alpha and then that uh, gets passed to the coroutine factory and then performs the fade out. The coroutine factory, it takes in an action, it takes in a duration, it uh, gets the time there, it takes the time, adds the, the delta time divided by the duration, which if it's one, then it's just going to be delta time. Performs the action, does the yield return null so that I enumerator works, and then makes sure that the action is fully performed at the very end. So again, your class now is getting much smaller. You have these factories that you can use everywhere else, and your code becomes a lot easier to read. And because it becomes a lot easier to read, it becomes a lot easier to debug. And the best part is, functionally, it works exactly the same. So let me just make sure I wire everything up here. So I want to do fade canvas X this time, because this is my new one. And then I drag and drop my canvas across into here. Save that. And now it does exactly the same thing, waits two seconds, and it will fade out. So it does exactly the same thing as it, as it used to do. Now, I mentioned that um, this is one action, but remember we can chain actions together. So what if we did, what if we scaled the canvas as well? What if we did um, action float scale canvas? And again, it takes in T, and then we do um, canvas group dot uh, game object dot transform dot local scale equals new and then we can when we fade it out we do the exact same thing as the alpha so it's going to be um, curve dot evaluate uh, t now we're going to have to do this three times so this is going to be a bit messy uh, but I'll show you how we can sort of fix that in just a sec. Um, okay. And then at the very end here we can do action float combined equals fade out plus scale canvas. And then instead of fade out, we pass in combined. So now we have, um, you can see straight away what's happening. We're fading out and we're scaling the canvas. We're fading out and we're scaling the canvas. It's even there, it's plus. This action and this action are being performed together. Uh, and we're doing it for this duration and we're, we're doing whatever we need to do there. So you're, you're making everything a lot easier to read when you do these kind of, you do it this way. So now what will happen is this will fade out and it will go to zero scale, which might break things, but we'll, we'll come to that when we get there. Um, I didn't scale, why didn't that scale? Oh, because it's, oh, yeah, okay. Um, Okay, let me let me uh, do something else that, that scales then. Um, 
uh, 3D object, uh, uh, cube. Let's do a cube. Okay, so the cube is at zero, zero, zero. Where's my canvas? So there's the game there, there's the canvas. So if I bring the, this back up, oh, it's orthogonal, isn't it? Oh, uh, orthographic, there you go. Um, and I make the cube, uh, make the cube like that. And then I do like a rotation here and then one in the Y. Um, so that kind of idea, okay? And then I will add, just for for purposes in here, so I'll do public game object obj. And I will drag that obj into that slot, this cube into that slot there, okay? So there's my cube there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale the cube down uh, to zero. So instead of canvas group, it's gonna be uh, that. So it's going to be OB, actually it's just going to be OBJ dot transform dot local scale and it's going to evaluate all those things there. Okay. Sure. Now it's going to wait to two seconds. It's going to fade out the menu and then it's going to scale the cube down at the same time. And that's the sort of beauty of doing these kind of nice little uh, kind of classes together is that you can combine them and, and change them in, in lots of different ways. So uh, I hope you like this video and uh, I'm doing a video a, a, a day uh, for the whole month of September. So I hope you can join me tomorrow. So thanks again for watching and uh, thanks, bye-bye. Hi guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, this is part of the Video A Day in September 2017 videos. Uh, if you liked it or you didn't like it, hit the appropriate button below. Uh, subscribe, so if you hit the, the little icon over there, then you'll get notified, uh, especially when you hit the little alarm icon. That's the really important part, apparently. Uh, then you'll get notified when a new video goes up. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.